Sachas Gitin Daf Mem Vav begins immediately following a Mishnah that, that discussed two scenarios in which a man who divorces his wife may not remarry her. The Gemara is going to bring two possible reasons why he can't remarry in those two scenarios, a Brisa for each one, and then two different versions of a statement of Rav Yosef Armin Yumi. Monosh lines up with each. So the Mishnah had said that a man who divorces his wife because there were rumors about inappropriate behavior on her part, or because she made nidarm, she made vows that he didn't like, or he found to be intolerable that she should make those vows, he, if he divorces her for either of these two reasons, he cannot remarry her. Now, what is the reason why is there this rule that he can't remarry her? So there's two versions. The Gemara says, one version is because we're afraid that he's trying to mess her up or that he will mess her up later. That is, he'll divorce her, she'll go remarry someone else. And then he's going to claim that the divorce that he did was under false pretenses and is therefore void. And the fact that she's married to someone else is a uh, znos. And the children she had are Ramzerim because she was never really divorced. Now, what's the false? Why did he? Why is it a mistake? So if he later finds out that the rumors were false, he could say I only divorced you because they thought the rumors were true. It turns out they're false. So it was divorced under false pretenses. And about Nadarm, he could say, I thought that I wouldn't be able to get those Nadarm canceled. Then I heard you could go to a Chacham and get them canceled. Therefore, I never would have divorced you had I known. And therefore, it's false. Now, this is one potential reason. Umar quotes a Brisa that says this reason, where says a mayor says, what is the reason somebody divorces his wife because of shame ra rumors or because of a or because of Nadarm cannot remarry her? Maybe she'll go marry someone else. And he'll say, if I would have known that this is the situation, even if he would have given me a hundred money, I never would have divorced her. And the gap will be canceled, and her children are Ramzer. So the Mishta, so the Bryce continues, and therefore we say to him, you should know that somebody who divorces his wife because of Shamra or because of Nadarm, he cannot take her back at all. So that's one Bryce. And the other Bryce says, it's Rabbi Elizabeth Rabbi Yesu, says that the reason is because we're, we don't want women to be in the habit of Arias or for them to be in the habit of making an Nadarm. So, this Bryson says, why does, uh, why does Chazal say that he cannot remarry? So they shouldn't be prutzois, but arise of an nidarm. Therefore, he ha we say to him, tell her, say to the husband, tell your wife, you should know, because of the rumors about you, and because of the nether that you made, that's why I'm divorcing you. So that she should know that this is the reason, and that will get people out of that habit so that it will become widespread that this is not a smart thing to do. Now, there are two versions of Rav Yisab Yumi as to what he said. According to one version, he said, this halacha that the Mishnah said, that he can't remarry her, is only if he had told her that the reason I'm divorcing you is because of the shame route, because of the, the, the nether. The Gemara says that fits with the first version that the, we're concerned he's going to mess her up and say it was under false pretenses. In order for him to be able to claim false pretenses, he has to have said that that was the pretense. He has to have said that that was the reason. And therefore, that fits with the first version, the first explanation. Now, the second version of this is mean, slightly different. Not that he said to her that this is the reason, but he has to go and actually tell her this is the reason. Right? So it's not that he can't remarry her because he said it. It's when he divorces her, and we tell him, you can't remarry her, he has to go tell her this is the reason that you are being divorced. And that is the second explanation, because he, we want her to know that he won't be able to remarry her because of this priestess in Arias and this priestess in Nidara. Okay, next, the Gemara refers to the next line of mission where Yehuda had said that a nether that's made in public you can't take back. He had specifically said that he can't remarry her, and that was because he had understood that the only reason that we're not letting him remarry her if the divorce was because of Nadarim is because we don't want them to be parts of Arias, and therefore he said we don't want them to be parts of Nadarim, and therefore we don't let it if it's a nether that can't be canceled. Those are the ones we're worried about. But the bottom line is he's saying that a nether which has made Barabim can't be canceled. There's no hafar. So Gemara wants to know where does he get that from. So Gemara quotes, about the Givonim. Givonim were people from Eretz Yisrael, from the seven nations who left, and they ran away, and then they came back and said, we're strangers, we're not really from here, and Kal Yisrael accepted them, and made a nether that they weren't going to harm them, and then when they found out that they were really Givonim from Eretz Yisrael, they kept the nether anyway, even though they had uh, lied. So the Gemara, that is the Givonim, had lied as to who they were. So Gemara says, so this is the source, because it says, so Rabbi Shul ben Levi says, who does the reason is, because it says, well, he come b'nei Yisrael, ki nishbul him. The b'nei Yisrael didn't strike them, because they had sworn to them. Nesiei the leaders had sworn to them. So the 
Gemara says that the reason is because they had made the explanation because they had made the Shavuah Barabim. It had been a public Shavuah, and therefore they had uh, sworn them, and that's why they couldn't be, um, they couldn't cancel, couldn't be Mayfair or Matir the nether that they had made. So this is a proof that a public nether cannot be canceled. Now, what did the Rabbanon say? How come they don't say that uh, over here that the reason that they had to keep their nether is because it was Barabim? So says uh, this is different. The nether is worse than a nether that you're canceling because it was you want to be Matir and say, had I known their Gavinim, I would have never made the nether. This is much worse than that. What's happening here is not that you made the nether and you want to get a hatar for it. This nether was never hal in the first place. It was made under the false assumption that they were who they didn't say they were. And therefore, it was never hal at all. So they didn't have to keep the nether at all. The only reason they kept it was because it would have been a chalashem. People would have said, oh, you see, the Jews don't keep the nether that they, that they have. So they made it even though it wasn't halachically binding at all. And therefore, this doesn't prove anything about what's halachically binding nether. Or not. So now the Gemara discusses what is a Rabbim? What is a, what is called a Nender made in public that Rabbi Huda would say cannot be canceled. So Rabbi Nachum says three people, Rabbi Yitzchak says ten people. Rabbi Nachum's source is because in discussing the days of Azov, it says Yomim Rabbim, so Rabbim adds to Yomim. Yomim is a minimum of two, plural, Rabbim is three, so therefore any Rabbim is three. Rabbi Yitzchak says ten because you have the word Eidah that's used, a congregation, which is linked to a minion, and therefore it's referring to a minimum of ten people that are there. Gemara now moves on to discuss the next machlokas in that mission, which is between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Lazar. Rabbi Meir says that a neder that the husband could have been Mayfear on his own, that's a neder that he could take her back, and there's no concern. A neder that he cannot be made for on his own, that he, she needs to go to a chacham, that's one that he can't take back. And the reason is because the one that she has, she could that he can't be made for for her, he could say, I didn't realize that she could get a heter, and now that she was able to get a heter from the chacham, it was a mistake. Otherwise, you can't say that. Now, Rabbi Lazar disagrees, and he says, no, he can't say, if I would have known she could get a heter from a chacham, I would have said she should, because we have, because um, that's the neder that, he doesn't explain why in the mission, but he says that's the neder that he can't claim that it was a mistake and there's no way. So we ask that as Xer out to the other one. So more explains, so they're arguing over whether a neder that she needs to go to Chacham to be Matir, could, would the husband have been able to claim that that's a mistake, that he would be able to mess her up, and we would have to make a rule that he can't marry, can't remarry her in order to prevent this mistake from, in order to prevent from him from him claiming that it was a mistake. So what's a Mechokis over? And what's a Mechokis is about whether we assume that a person would be happy having his wife going to Basden in order to get a heter for her Neder. According to Rabbi Lozar, we know a person does not want his wife stopping around to Beisden. Therefore, if he says, I wanted her to go to Beisden, and if I would have known she could go to Beisden, I never would have divorced her, then we don't believe that. And therefore, we would not allow, we would not take her away from her second husband if that was his claim. We wouldn't say that the divorce was under false pretenses. We don't believe that claim. According to Rabbi however, we would and that's because it's quite possible that he wouldn't mind if she embarrasses herself. After all, they're not on good terms anyway. And therefore, if he makes that claim that he thought that she could get, that he didn't realize she could get ahead there, we would believe her, him, and end up taking her away from her second husband and making mom's error. Umar now discusses the last section of the Mishnah, where Rabbi Yisab Yehuda brings a story. says the incident happened in Tzidah, and somebody said to his wife, Kainam, that's a lashon of a neder. If I don't divorce you, then he divorced her. The Chalamim were mad to him to take her back. The reason Misha says is because of Tikkun Ha'elam, because of helping the world. So the Gemara says, what does this have to do with anything? Here we're talking about where the husband made a neder. The rest of the mission was discussing where she makes a neder. What's going on here? What is this story trying to prove? So the Gemara says there's a line missing. You have to insert here that the entire Misha up to now was discussing when she made the neder, that's where he can't remarry her. But if he makes the neder, then we allow him to remarry her. And says, the support of that is the story. See, it didn't happen. There's somebody who said to his wife, neder, if I, if I he said, that is, a neder if I do not divorce you. And he divorced her, and they allowed him to take her back because of Tikkunayim. So the Gemara has some more analysis here. The Gemara says, first of all, what does he mean, kainam? Kainam is he's assering something. What's he assering? So Gemara explains, he means to say that all the fruits of the world should be assered to me if I don't divorce you. It's a way of forcing himself to do something by making a conditional tenai, by making a tenai on a neder which he can't keep, so he must therefore keep the tenai to break the neder. Then, 
it says that they allowed him to remarry. The Mishnah says, what's the Chiddush? Why would I think that he can't? The Mishnah says, it might be Xerah. You might think Mishum Gzeira not to allow it because of Rabbi Nassim. There's a Brisa where Rabbi Nassim says you should not be making a dorm, and if you do, you should not be keeping them. Somebody who makes a nether is like he built a Vama, like he built a Mizbeach outside the Vesemagnish in a time when it's Asr. That's problem number one. And then if he actually keeps a nether, he's getting into the habit of an adarm. That's even worse, and that's like he was actually makrav, a carbon on the Bama that he built. So I think wants to know, they allowed him to remarry, but they take an island. What's a take an island? Somewhere it says there is no Tikkun Eilam. You have to read the Mishnah differently. Either the Mipnei Tikkun Eilam is not going on this case, it's going on all the previous cases we had where he can't remarry her, or this is going on the fact that they allowed it, and they're saying Mipnei Tikkun Eilam because there's no Tikkun Eilam, there's no reason to forbid it, and that's why they allowed it. Now we get our next Mishnah, which discusses another situation in which somebody might not be able to remarry his wife. For similar reasons, this is talking about someone whose wife was an islandess. An islandess is a condition where a woman never develops signs of maturity. She has male characteristics, and she doesn't function as a normal female, and one of the things is she can't have children. When that diagnosis develops, it's considered usually to be a false marriage. A marriage is under false pretenses, and it's canceled retroactively. However, since they live together, we assume that he intended to marry her anyway. He intended that his beer should not be a beer that's no, so it should not be a beer that's not part of a marriage, and therefore he intended to be a Makadisher. And therefore, a get is required. He can't just say it's not a valid marriage. However, um, once if he divorces her with the understanding that the reason is because she's an islandess, he might not be able to remarry. It's a machlik. So Rabbi Huda says he can't take her back, and the Chacham say he can take her back. Now Rabbi Huda says he can't, because we're afraid that, let's say, she goes, she marries someone else, and the situation clears up. She has kids. So now the original husband is going to say, if I would have known, you're not really an island, I never would have divorced her in the first place, and therefore my original divorce is void, and now her children from the second husband are Mamzerim, and her marriage to her to him is a void marriage of Znus. So Rabbi Huda is afraid of that, and therefore he says, he should we tell him, you're not going to be able to take her back? You it will be no claim of false pretenses. This is not going to happen. Now, and, and therefore, because he knows that, he can't make the claim. Now, the Chachamim aren't concerned that such a thing is going to happen for whatever reason, and therefore they say he can take her back, no problem. Now, what happens if he if it actually happens? He divorces her because she's an islas. He does not pay her exuba because he says that this marriage was under false pretenses. And then she goes to marry someone else and she has kids. So now she wants to say, so you see, you divorced me because I was an islandess, but I wasn't really an islandess, because you see, I had kids. So now you owe me my ksuba. So we tell her, you're better off being quiet and not claiming your ksuba, because if you're going to claim your ksuba and say that you're an islandess, not only is your original marriage to him going to have uh, come into question, but your divorce will come into question, and then you may be in a znos marriage right now, your second marriage, and your kids might be mamzerim. So better off be quiet, let it stand as a marriage to an islandess, a uh, divorce because of islandess, and therefore you don't get your ksuba from the first husband. However, at least you don't have to worry about your divorce being canceled and making problems with your new marriage. Now, the Gemara begins, and the Gemara says there's an immediate contradiction between this Mishnah and our last Mishnah. And this Mishnah, Rabbi Huda, is afraid of the potential mess up of having her marriage, of having her divorce canceled and making her kids in the room, and the Rabbanon are not concerned. In our previous Mishnah, however, was the opposite. The Rabbanon said that he can, if he divorces her because of Nidharm or because of Shemra, because of rumors, he can't remarry her. And that's the Rabbanon were afraid of the Kilkul of him claiming that it was false and that uh, her divorce was void. And Rabbi Huda there wasn't concerned about it. He just said that the reason is because we don't want him to be parts in Arias, and therefore we don't want them to be parts in Nidharm, that is, and therefore it depends if it's a cancelable nether or not. So you see, it's opposites. So why why are the opinions here switched from what they were before? So Shemuel says, switch it. The names are wrong. Meaning to say, switch the second Mishnah. The Chachamim are the one who are chayshish for the problem with the islandess and review who does not. So Mar says, well, hold on a second. But the end of the Mishnah where uh, she claims her ksuba, and we say to her, you're better off not claiming your ksuba, it's Rabbi Huda is the one who says that. It's, the Mishnah specifies, Rabbi Huda said, don't claim your ksuba because he can mess you up by claiming that the divorce was false. You see, Rabbi Huda is chayesh for kilkul. So Mar says, no, switch that one also. That also wasn't Rabbi Huda, that was also the chachamim. 
The Gemara now offers a different answer. The Gemara focuses first on Rabbi Huda. So Gemara says, Rabbi Huda, here is not a contradiction of Rabbi Huda earlier. Rabbi Huda, in the case of the Islamists, is concerned for a Kokol that he'll claim that the divorce was void under false pretenses. However, as far as the cancellation of an Adarim, Rabbi Huda is not chashish for that. And the reason is because he holds, we don't believe him if he says, had I known we could have canceled the Nedar, that uh, I would never have gone through with the Divorce. And that's because Rabbi Huda holds of both Rabbi Elazar and Rabbi Meir's cheshbon. Rabbi Elazar had said, we assume if she requires the hatar of a chacham, he would not have wanted her to go through with that. We don't believe him when he says, I would have made her go through with that because we don't want her to have to run around to the courts. And if it does not require chacham, on that, Rabbi Yehuda holds like Rabbi Meir that he, he can't claim if I would have known I would have uh, bin Matir, because it's his own power of Hafara. He should know, and he should be aware of that. There's no claim, had I known. Of course you know, it's your own issue. So therefore, Rabbi Huda says, there's no possible way he could claim, because of the neder, that it's a false divorce. However, here, he could. Well, he thought she was an analyst, and it turns out she's not. Now, how do you resolve the Rabbanon and the Rabbanon? So, Rava answers that one. Rava says, this is a particular Rabbanon here. This is Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir is Shita and Kedushin, who holds that you can only say that something was contingent if you made a tenai kavod. That's if you said, I'm doing this on condition this, and if not this, then not that. I mean, you have to say the yes side and the no side. And here, he didn't say that. He didn't spell it out. He just said, I'm divorcing you. The standing, you're an islandist. He didn't say, and if you're not an islandist, you're not divorced. And therefore, there is no way to cancel it. And that's why the chachamim here are not concerned. But it has nothing to do, really, with what uh, the previous chachamim had held about not being chayshish for Kilkel. Now we get our next mission, the final mission for this staff, and it discusses if someone sells himself or he sells his children to an Avi Kichavim, what's Alachavir? Does that have a knas on it? So the Gemara says if somebody sells himself or his children, the Mishnah says someone sells himself or his children to an Avi Kichavim, you do not redeem him, but after the father dies, then you redeem the children. So the Gemara will explain this. The Gemara Kosovasi, who says it's only if he sells himself two or three times that it's a repeated practice. That's because he's trying, if we're redeeming him, he's figuring this is a good strategy to repay the debt that he owes or whatever he needs money for. He'll sell himself, keep the money, and we'll redeem him. So therefore, we have to stop it. Now, the Gemara on the next stuff will explain that the children, it's not their fault. However, we don't want them to be hefker is our main concern. And as long as the father's alive, he'll keep an eye on them. Once the father has died, then we have to redeem the kids, even if it was multiple times. So the Gemara quotes an incident. The Gemara says that there were people living in a town called Bay Michsi. They had borrowed a lot of money from the Kichav and didn't have money to pay back. And those Avdi Kichav were coming and taking them as captives. So they rent her of Huna. And he said, what could I do? The Mishnah says, if somebody keeps on selling himself and never could him, we can't redeem him. So Rabbi Abba said, but you taught us that it's only if they sell himself, if he's selling himself two or three times. This is repeated practice that he's doing. So he answered, he said, these uh, people in this town are constantly doing this. This is a constant practice that they have, so it does match that halacha.